Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm Shade. Thank y'all so much for joining me back on my podcast, Hidden Alchemy Podcast by Shade. For today's episode, we are diving into the theme of cultivating peace. Now, I feel like I say this about every theme that I mention on my podcast, but this is definitely one of my favorite topics as well, because this is the reason why I started and began my meditation practice. And I'm going to dive into how meditation helps us to cultivate peace and just why cultivating peace within ourselves is so important. Now, I do want to make it very clear. Something that I have noticed along my journey, being a yoga teacher, meditation teacher, astrologer, is peace. The idea of peace is a practice. Just like you practice yoga, you practice meditation, you have to practice cultivating peace. It's not something where you just wake up and you have peace. No, you have to practice that every day and just harness it just like a muscle. And the reason why practicing peace is so important is because the mind, our mind is literally the most important and key element of how we move and operate in the world around us. And if your mind is unstable, then you are going to have a very hard time operating and moving in the world. And when you prioritize peace, when you practice peace within yourself, it helps you to really maneuver and go through life's challenges and life's changes, be in relationships with others while still having this groundedness within yourself. Because peace is essentially a state of mind. It's a state of being. And again, something you have to practice. Now, I started my meditation practice, I would say, how old am I? I'm 31. I started my meditation practice when I was 20, so about 11 years ago, but I was never consistent with it. It was something that I did with yoga, and I would I was on and off for months at a time. And then I would say I really committed to learning more about the meditation practice. I would say for the past six, seven years, and for the past three years, I've had a consistent everyday meditation practice. And that is really what has shifted and allowed me to cultivate peace within myself so that I can move through the world. And really a lot of it too is because it feels good to have a grounded, stable mind. Like I don't know about you, but if you have ever been in a situation where you have felt like you have lost your mind, please feel like that is very normal. Okay, it happens. But if you have ever been in a situation where you have felt like you have lost your mind, then you understand more than anybody why prioritizing your peace is so important. And that was definitely me. I was the type of person that is very instinctual and very impulsive. And I had to learn how to harness my fire and how to really focus my fire more intentionally on things that would cultivate a better karmic response for myself in the future. And really what I mean by that is, is just moving with more mindfulness, moving with more intention. But it's not something that I understood how to cultivate until I dived into my yoga practice. And most importantly, until I dived into my meditation practice, as well as Kundalini and being an astrologer and deepening my studies, understanding my chart, that has really helped me to understand how to practice more peace in my life, how to practice more mindfulness. Because really, our mind is the most valuable substance. When I learned through my yoga practice that the mind was the hardest thing to master, I knew at that moment that I wanted to spend and dedicate a large time of my studies mastering my mind. Because if the mind, in my opinion, this is just how I think, if the mind is the hardest thing to master, then once you master the hardest thing, then you've ma- you can master anything else. Right. So that was what I took from it when I was 19, 20 years old and embarking on this yoga journey. And from then I had spent time just really getting into a meditation practice. And it took a few years for me to actually commit, which was really how I was. I was such a non-committal person. I would start something, I would never finish. I would like someone, I would never, I would ghost them. Like I was so non-committal. And meditation really helped me to hone my fire, hone my energy, and really focus on things so that I can have more stability and have more groundedness. 2020 was really when I dedicated most of my time to my meditation practice. 
But it wasn't until 2019 that I was like, you know what? We're going to actually commit to this because of my teachers. They would give me practices to do, and I thought that they were insane. They would say, okay, just sit, sit and recite this mantra for 11 minutes to help, you know, ease any clarity, to help bring some more clarity to the mind. And I was like, these people are insane. But I wanted to, I wanted to learn, and I dedicated time to it, and it's taken years. So to be where I am now, and I still have so much further to go. I did a meditation teacher training, everything. To be where I am now and really understand how powerful and potent the mind is, is why I say embracing a meditation practice and allowing yourself to understand your mind and find ways to bring better balance to it is what's going to really help you to bring more peace and mindfulness into your everyday life. Because without a peaceful, grounded mind, you are not going to be able to get through the challenges that we are going through. And especially the challenges that we are going through globally right now, let alone on your personal life. You need to have a practice that allows you to ground mentally so that the world around you can feel you can feel more capable to get through because a lot of times we're getting through, but for a lot of us, we're barely making it, <laughs> okay? We're barely making it. So starting a meditation practice is what has really helped me to have more clarity, have more grounding, have more awareness of my mind. I think a lot of times people think that meditating means getting rid of your thoughts. No, meditating is seeing your thoughts and becoming the seer instead of the reactor, and then becoming the responder and responding from a place of peace, from a space of wholeness and groundedness. So definitely harnessing a meditation practice, that is what worked for me because I was really a loose cannon. Like people who know me for years know that I was not the way that I am now. And I dedicate a lot of that to my spiritual practice, practicing yoga, practicing mantra, kundalini, astrology, meditation. But what trumps it is meditation, especially, especially mantra with meditation, because mantra is what really helps to cut the thoughts from the mind so that, not cut the thoughts from the mind, but cut the chatter so that you can have more grounding and, and see more clearly. So that is why I started my meditation practice. And that is really how meditation has really helped me to cultivate more mindfulness and more peace. Now, it is a constant practice. This is something that you have to do consistently. So think about how often you brush your teeth. That's how often you need to practice a mindfulness practice, practice a meditation practice, right? Or whatever it is for you that can bring that grounding into your mind, into your body. For me, it's either dance, it's yoga, it's music sometimes definitely meditation, walking, running, working out, bring that into your daily practice so that when things start to feel really chaotic, you know how to come back to yourself. And that's the thing. It's important to come back to yourself because a lot of times we search for peace outside in the world. No, it has to start with yourself. You have to embody what it is that you seek so that you can see it. You can't see what you don't have because you're not going to know what it is. So you have to embody that space and that state of peace within yourself through whatever practice gets you there. And that's where you will be able to see that in the world around you, as well as the duality of where there is chaos. And the reason why there is chaos is simply because there is an imbalancing in the mind. There's an imbalancing in the mind and there's an imbalancing in, in the way that we are living in our survival, right? Things are... The reason why we are going through so many things that we are going through globally around the world is for resources, is for survival, but it also stems from the mind, this notion of lack, this notion of greed, this notion of wanting more. So taking it away from the global aspect, bringing it back to on a personal note, starting with a practice that helps you to ground, that brings more mindfulness, and that can make you feel safe and at ease in mind and body. How I continue to practice and prioritize peace through my day-to-day, -day, like I said, it's a practice. Always coming back to my breath, okay? Always coming back to my breath. There are times, what meditation really does is it helps you to be the seer of your reality. So when things are happening, I can feel when I'm getting frustrated. I can feel when I'm getting sad. I can feel when I'm getting happy. I can feel all these emotions but I have more control 
So I'm able to see what's going on. I'm able to see what's happening internally. And then I'm able to make the best choice from a clear mind because my target is peace. My target is balance. So when you prioritize peace, you keep that as your target so that when things happen throughout the day to day, you come back to what your intention was. You come back to your goal. And that's why when I start my classes, I tell students what is, or I ask students, what is your intention? Why are you here? Why are you here? What is your intention? Keep that intention with you as you move, because as you move, things are going to come up. Come back to your intention so you can stay focused. If your intention is peace, then you're going to always come back to that. And all you can do is do your best and you're going to continue developing that muscle because that's what meditation does. It helps you to develop a muscle to stay focused on your target, to stay focused on the drishti, right? And if that drishti for you is peace, then you're going to always come back to that focal point despite what's happening around you. Peace is about you prioritizing that within your life, not necessarily bringing that peace to others. You cannot bring peace to other people who cannot cultivate it within themselves, okay? Because they're going to look at you like, what can I do with this? Because they have not embodied that yet. So peace is really for you to practice that within yourself, embody that energy and that essence, and the people who are able to receive that from you are going to be able to receive that without taking from you. And that's the thing. You got to be mindful of people who notice your peace and use it for their benefit or people who are ready to receive that and then cultivate a better understanding and awareness within themselves. A lot of times when we're cultivating peace, we like to be the peacemakers for other people. And that was me. I am literally that person, whether that be with my parents, my friends, people love to come to me as a place of solace or place of, of, of advice, et cetera, et cetera. But I had to realize that my peace is for me. I cannot give that to you if you are not capable of cultivating it within yourself. I can only show you through my actions. So I had to unlearn this notion of peace meant bringing peace to other people and instead knowing that, no, it means, being, bringing, it means bringing peace to myself and making sure that I'm in a state of balance, I'm in a state of stability so that I can meet you from that place of stability and balance. But I cannot pour my peace into your cup if you have never cultivated that within yourself. And that's something that we really get mistaken. And this is why a lot of people can really be taken advantage of because they're so peaceful. But peace does not mean a lack of, of war, right? Because everything is its duality. You can't have one spectrum without the opposite, right? You can't have one without the opposite. Just like a balance beam, you're always going to have two. Just like we have two lungs, two kidneys, two ribs, you're always going to have two. So peace doesn't mean that there's a lack of war. It just means that there's a preference for something. But when things are inching towards the other end, the only way that we can bring balance is by leaning into the opposite. So if you are leaning too much into being that peaceful light for everybody else, that's when people are going to bring war to your table a lot of times. And then you got to tap into that duality, not for the sake of being in the place of war, but for the sake of balancing out your level of peace. And the same thing for the opposite. If there's too much war going on, the only way you can balance that out is through peace to bring balance, to bring harmony into things. And this is why it is so important to prioritize peace within yourself because you will always be protected because you are moving from a stable, grounded mind. The reason why everything is happening the way it's happening right now is because we are not stable in the mind. And because we are not stable in the mind, we are not stable with our actions. And we're moving from greed. We're moving from, from lack, a place of lack, from greed, from lying, from deceit, from all of these different things. doesn't make it right or wrong. It just makes it what it is. And there is a deep need to prioritize wholeness within oneself and peace. And when you prioritize peace within yourself, you don't worry about what other people do. You let people sit in their misery. You let people sit in their pain and you show them love and you move forward with your peace. What's the most important thing for me is making sure that I can sleep at night. Okay. I will never forget when someone told me this to sleep is, is to be in a state of peace. And the reason why a lot of people have issues with falling asleep 
is because they're not at peace internally. And this is why it is so important to prioritize mindfulness and peace in your day-to-day, not to be better than anybody, but really to be sane, (laughs) to be sane in this world, to be happy in this world, to be in a state of joy as well as a state of grief. Again, duality and everything. But when you know how to take care of yourself and bring yourself back to grounding, bring yourself home, home is where the heart is, home is where the peace is, home is where the love is. When you can bring yourself back to that space, to me, you are the most valuable player. He who has the peace is the most valuable player because you understand how to move through challenges with grace and ease because you cultivate that already within your mind. And our mind is our most valuable asset. So again, prioritize the peace that you need within yourself, move from that space, develop a meditation practice, develop a mindfulness practice in whatever shape or form that is in and continue to live from this space of groundedness in this space of inner truth and wisdom. Thank y'all so much for joining me for today's topic, Prioritizing Peace. Cannot wait to see you for our next podcast episode, everyone. I'm Shade, and I'll see you next time.